Welcome to the lectures on fundamentals of MIMO wireless communications. Uh, we have started to discuss uh, diversity performance. We have seen selection combining. We have also seen ma maximal ratio combining. Uh, we have seen uh, one way of calculating error probability. Uh, I would also like to show you uh, two different ways of arriving at the same error probability expression. So, that would be one of the most important goals of this particular lecture. So, before uh, we start on uh, with the error probability expression for uh, maximal ratio combining, uh, I would like to draw an equivalence between uh, two kind of descriptions for typical error probability expression, so that uh, things are less confusing in uh, all future things that we do. So, to uh, begin with, let us consider a BPSK system, where uh, we have one symbol at minus root E b and another symbol at root E b and this could also be written as a. So, for this situation we can always write that the d min is the minimum distance uh, between the constellation points for this simple case is equal to 2 root over E b which is also 2 times a. And uh, for this case, if you are to write the expression of S n r signal to noise ratio uh, for PPSK, it is gamma b that is S n r per bit. Uh, this is equal to square root of E b that is this value squared divided by sigma squared n which is the noise variance. And this is basically E b by n naught. This is the expression which we are uh, more used to. Now, this is uh, equal to a squared because root E b is a by sigma squared n which is equal to E b by n naught. Now, given these things that we have uh, definitely we could write E b by n naught is equal to a squared by sigma squared n or a squared equals to E b. Uh, generally, uh, we have error probability expression for a w g n as q function of square root of 2 gamma b, which is q function of square root of 2 e b by n naught. In some cases, you might find error probability expression is also given as q root over d mean squared by 2 n naught. This expression is also used in many places. So, if we expand this expression, we are going to get uh, root over d mean squared is basically d minimum is 2 a that means 4 a squared divided by 2 times n naught which is q of square root of 2 a squared by n naught. And since these probability expressions uh, would be the same, so that means the argument of this must be the same and also we find it uh, clearly it is the same if you take out 2 and 2. E b by n naught should be equal to a squared by n naught and we have here also E b by n naught as a squared by n naught. So, if you look at these two expressions, this is equal to E b by n naught, gamma b is also equal to E b by n naught. So, this we could also write it as q of square root of 2 E b by n naught, which is equal to q of square root of 2 gamma b. In other words, this expression is the same as this expression. So, we need not be confused and uh, just to draw the equivalence for quick reference later on d mean squared by 2 n naught is equal to 2 gamma b. Uh, so, this this means this is equal to 2 e b by n naught or if you cancel out n naught from both the sides, you have d mean squared is equal to 4 e b. Now, this is again well established from here. If you see d mean squared, if I take from here, I would get d mean squared is equal to 4 e b. So, the same expression holds. So, basically uh, under this circ circumstance everything holds true. So, we are just using this to show that either this expression or this expression all of them are correct and they will be used uh, as and when applicable. Generally speaking, uh, we would uh, use probability of error expression as this approximate expression c 1 e to the power of minus c 2 gamma, gamma is the SNR. So, I would say probability of error 
because this is sometimes written as probability of symbol error and sometimes probability of bit error depending upon what we are interested in. In all cases, uh, this kind of expression is typically uh, used. This is an approximate expression coming from Chernoff plan. So, and this is very very useful whenever there is an exponential function. Usually, the relationship between P s and P b uh, for gray coding is P s divided by number of bits is equal to P b. This is again an approximate expression. So, these are some of the things uh, we should keep in mind uh, when we will be using uh, the, the error probability calculations. So, now moving forward uh, with this is uh, the uh, error probability for MRC. We have already done one and again we will use the churn of bound. So, the churn of bound tells us that q of x is less than uh, or equal to e to the power of minus x squared by 2. So, this, this basically leads to the earlier expression that we had that error probability expression looks uh, in this form. So, we will we'll take a look at that. So, probability of error symbol error is uh, given as alpha m q of this is what I was uh, explaining uh, root over beta m and gamma I would put a summation indicating that of an MRC. So, this is less than or equal to alpha m e to the power of minus beta m gamma combination by 2. So, if you look at this expression that we had written here, this is similar in form over here where c 1 is equal to alpha m and c 2 is equal to beta m by 2. So, this uh, is a typical form that is very very useful and in our case uh, this is equal to alpha m e to the power of minus beta m by 2 and this uh, gamma sigma that we have written is basically i equals 1 to m gamma i where gamma i is the SNR experienced by each branch and as usual we are going to ex uh, we are going to calculate the P s that means uh, average probability of error uh, for MRC to do that it is 0 to infinity the probability of error symbol error as a function of gamma sigma right this is a function of gamma sigma you can clearly see that uh, times p that is the probability density function of gamma sigma times gamma sigma d gamma sigma. Now, for simplicity uh, we would uh, take off this uh, gamma sigma and if you look at this this particular expression there is p d f probability density function of uh, the joint probability density function of the gamma that is summation of gamma i what we ideally need is uh, the joint distribution of all these gammas. Now, if we take independent branches that means all these branches are independent that is uh, as we have said earlier that we will make that assumption for uh, getting insight into the results then the joint distribution is basically product of distributions and that is what we are going to exploit in, in both the cases. So, what we are going to have is if I if I look at this expression it is uh, alpha m e to the power of minus beta m by 2 and uh, the summation that I have uh, I could write it or I could say gamma i and there is a product of it or so I have taken one of them integrate 0 to infinity. Now, I take this the particular one corresponding to gamma i 1 by gamma bar the average SNR in that particular uh, link which is again the same for that link uh, gamma i by gamma and d gamma i. So, this is for one of them and uh, since p gamma p gamma sigma is basically product of all the gammas we will have again p gamma if this is gamma 1 this gamma 1 this gamma 1 p gamma 2 d gamma 2 again integrate 0 to infinity and so on all of them and these will be m in number and for each one see here we have this e to the power of minus beta m by 2 gamma 1. So, here uh, we are going to get or in the second one we are going to get e to the power of minus beta m by 2 gamma 2 and so on and so forth. So, for, for every of the integral we are going to get that. So, to get to the error probability we need to uh, solve one of these integrals. Uh, one of those integrals uh, if you solve them uh, you are going to get alpha m of course, it comes out it is uh, 1 by gamma bar e to the power of minus beta m by 2 
1 by gamma bar divided by minus of beta m by 2 plus 1 by gamma bar limits 0 to infinity. So, if you if you work this out you are going to get this as 1 upon 1 plus gamma bar beta m by 2. If I take out gamma bar this gamma bar and the gamma bar I take out over here cancels with each other. So, this is the particular expression uh, that we are left with and then what we would be having is 1 by 1 plus gamma bar theta m by 2. This is the result of one of the integrals and since all of them are identically distributed all these p gammas are identically distributed we will be getting again those factors multiplied with each other we will be getting those factors uh, multiplied with each other. So, effectively what we will be getting is raised to the power of m because there are m such integrals alpha m is outside and uh, if you uh, if you make the approximation that gamma bar is much much greater than 1 that means average SNR is pretty high uh, this could lead to alpha m and beta m by 2 gamma bar raised to the power of minus m. So, this is again the same expression that we have got this this expression as well as this expression are the same expressions. So, all we are trying to say is uh, by the earlier method or by this method uh, you are able to get to the same uh, same result. Uh, what we will now do is uh, show you another way of uh, doing the same calculations, uh, so that uh, you are well conversant uh, with these techniques, which you can apply in other situations, which is uh, not being covered in this particular case. So, again let us take a look at gamma sigma, gamma sigma is basically i equals 1 to m gamma i that is summation over gamma i. And, uh, the P s expression of course, we take the same P s expression C 1 e to the power of minus C 2 uh, gamma s. So, or, or gamma sigma whatever it is and uh, yeah. So, so what we have taken is basically alpha m e to the power of minus beta m by 2 gamma this is the expression we have taken and again P s bar is equal to 0 to infinity we are going to apply the same thing e to the power of minus C 2 gamma P gamma sigma gamma t gamma. Basically, this distribution is for the combined SNR and if we assume independence that means, if we assume that the joint distribution of all these uh, SNRs are they are independent. So, we are going to get p gamma 1 of gamma 1 multiplied by p gamma 2 of gamma 2 and so on up to p gamma m of gamma and this, this is what we exploited in the earlier method. So, again uh, carrying on with the same thing. So, going to get C 1 integral 0 to infinity m of them m number of them e to the power of minus C 2 sum over gamma i i equals to 1 to m p gamma 1 gamma 1 times p gamma 2 gamma 2 up to p gamma m gamma m d gamma 1 d gamma 2 up to d gamma m. This is what we have done till now in the in the previous case. So, at, at this point uh, again the same thing that we will we'll use uh, this particular expression uh, you could write it as equal to product of i equals to i equals to 1 to m e to the power of minus c 2 gamma i. So, this these two expressions are equivalent. So, hence uh, we could use this expression and that is what we have precisely done. Uh, but here we will use a slight modification compared to the last expression the last method that we did. So, we have I uh, will write down the integral again m number of such uh, integrals here product of i equals to 1 to m e to the power of minus c 2 gamma i if this is the product p gamma i gamma i d gamma i. So, this, this is a more concise way of, of writing the expression and uh, if we now focus on uh, one of the integral let us see how does it look like Th this, this product sign I can bring it outside as we have done before c 1 is of course outside i equals 1 to m integral 0 to infinity this is precisely what we have done in the previous. So, till now uh, the steps are remaining the same there is no modification and this particular expression now if we, if you observe this this is where we make the slight uh, variation it's the result is going to be the same but still uh, the way we could do it is different 
uh, if you look at this this expression uh, it reminds us of moment generating function where we say the moment generating function uh, s of gamma let us say is equal to expected value of e to the power of s gamma that means the expectation of e to the power of s gamma this is a function of s and we are taking the random variable gamma so this is 0 to infinity that is the range of gamma expectation means c of gamma e to the power of s gamma d gamma this is the expression if we look at this expression now it is precisely the moment generating function where s is equal to minus c2 so if, if we have this result already derived that means if we have the moment generating function and we can see that uh, we are using a moment generating function here then we could exploit that expression and uh, we could get it so for our case uh, we have uh, e to the power of s gamma is basically 0 to infinity e to the power of s gamma c gamma d gamma and s is equal to minus c2 this is what we have already said so if you use this e gamma as 1 by gamma bar e to the power of minus gamma by gamma bar e to the power of s gamma d gamma integral 0 to infinity again we have the same thing the result is 1 by 1 plus c2 gamma bar this is this is the expression that we have so this expression now we can substitute over here so what we get is c1 m times 1 by 1 plus c2 gamma bar so m times the same thing is this again if we if remember what is c1 we have alpha m 1 by 1 plus beta m by 2 c2 is uh, c2 is beta m by 2 that is what uh, we have identified here if you see c2 is basically beta m by 2 so that that is what we will be using so we have it raised to the power of m again the same expression for large gamma bar approximation uh, this will become alpha m beta m gamma bar by 2 raised to the power of minus m so what what we have essentially done is uh, done it in in different ways and still we arrive at the same expression of uh, probability of error so uh, the main idea of uh, doing this particular thing is that uh, you are able to use these techniques uh, wherever which one you find uh, more applicable and uh, you can calculate the probability of error for the appropriate uh, scheme that uh, is under consideration uh, with this uh, we'd uh, quickly uh, start or take a look at the general diversity that is uh, that is what uh, the general order of diversity or general way of uh, doing diversity that is uh, if we look at uh, if we try to analyze a typical diversity system uh, we will say that uh, there are uh, n number of m number of links between a transmitter and a receiver m number of links between a transmitter and a receiver and the first link has a channel coefficient h1 the second link has a channel coefficient h2 like that the last link has channel coefficient hm and we have 1 2 up to m receivers so basically yi is the ith received signal and from the transmitter we are sending root over es upon m uh, as the signal uh, energy or the signal power per transmit branch so when we are doing uh, transmit uh, side diversity that means you can uh, consider uh, time diversity frequency diversity or even spatial diversity when we are uh, doing diversity from the transmitter side uh, or general diversity that is uh, what we can consider uh, we have this particular thing at hand so that means uh, the power is is uh, power is done in such a way that the total power at the transmitter uh, so remains as uh, es so if you take the square of this you're going to get es upon m uh, as the power of any one of the branches uh, multiplied by m number of branches so basically the total power is es that that's indicating that uh, the total power of this system is not different from the case where i have a single input and a single output case so this is a primary assumption uh, which we will make so the received signal yi is equal to root over es upon m times hi s plus ni so this is uh, pretty straightforward hi is the channel coefficient s is the signal and n is the noise noise is zero mean circular symmetric complex gaussian this is what we have already described before 
and sigma squared n i is equal to sigma squared n that is typically what we use for noise and it is n naught and of course, we have expectation of n i n j conjugate is equal to 0. So, that means, uh, they are uncorrelated, they are independent, it is Gaussian. So, these typical assumptions uh, as we have made earlier also holds true and at the receiver, we would like to maximize the SNR. So, we would say that I would like to have a combiner such that the received signal z is uh, formed by i equals 1 to m h i conjugate y i. This means, I have knowledge about the ith channel which is h i. So, I have knowledge about the ith channel which is h i and I use it, I, I take the conjugate multiply by y i and I get it. So, if you if you expand this expression, uh, you are going to get i equals 1 to m uh, y i. Uh, of course, we will have root over E s upon m mod h i squared s plus h i conjugate n i. This is the expression you are going to get. So, we are adding up all of all of these terms. If we write eta as the expression of s n r, uh, then we are going to get the square of this term divided by the square of this term given h. So, we will be getting 1 by a m square of this and sum over i equals 1 to m mod h i squared E s by n naught E of s by n naught and this uh, you would often write it as rho. So, you could write it as 1 upon m and uh, if you would look at whatever is this, this is basically the Frobenius norm of h squared times rho. So, this is the S n r expression uh, that we have at the receiver for, for this particular scheme where we are dividing the power equally amongst all the transmit branches. So, the total power remains the same as this. So, with this uh, again we will be using the uh, the churn of pound uh, mechanism to calculate the error probability. So, the probe so of course, q of x is less than equal to e to the power of minus x squared by 2. So, I am writing it uh, often so that we remember uh, this is the one that we will be using. So, given this uh, probability of error is less than or equal to n e bar, uh, this this means this is another approximation for error probability, but if you look at the expression it is pretty similar uh, to what we have. Uh, n e bar uh, effectively means uh, I, I would give probability of error approximately equal to n e bar times q of root over d mean squared by 2 times eta. So, n e bar is the nearest minimum uh, distance of separation sorry this is the number of nearest constellation point number of nearest constellation points. So, in case of BPSK it is 1, in case of QPSK it is 2 and this is the minimum distance to nearest neighbors. Right. So, so we have given this kind of an expression before and uh, eta is the S n r. So, basically uh, in case of uh, A w gen channel it is E s by n naught and, uh, and in, in our case uh, we have uh, channel coefficient also multiplied with that. So, given this uh, we could write probability of error we, with this approximation is less than uh, we will use uh, we will expand the full full of this is rho by 4 m d mean squared and uh, h f squared just, just look at it carefully. So, eta the expression that we have eta eta is rho by m rho by m we have uh, rho by m rho by m h f squared that is h f squared d mean squared and 2 multiplied by this 2 is 2 is 4. So, basically rho by 4 m d mean squared h f squared. So, this is this is the uh, error probability expression and uh, now we can use our earlier result. Uh, so, basically what we want is p e bar average error probability. So, again we will be using the moment generating function because earlier we had said uh, expectation of e to the power of s or nu h f squared, we had used a negative sign there is equal to 1 by determinant of i the dimension of this. In this case, it is m plus 
if I use a plus, I use a minus over here. If I use a minus, I get a plus over here. New times uh, are so that would be one plus uh, product of i equals one to m in this particular case. One plus uh, plus or minus depending upon what we have mu times lambda of r lambda i of r. So, when when it is independent when h are independent we are going to get uh, these eigenvalues as all 1. Uh, so, what you will be left with is the average S n r. So, when you are left with the average S n r uh, you could write the average probability of error to be uh, the expectation over this. So, we will have the product i equals 1 to m because uh, this is of size m and the maximum size is of size m 1 plus rho rho is basically uh, rho d mean squared by 4 m this this whole term is basically mapping to our new in this expression or s whatever you would like to use and uh, that of h of squared uh, is basically 1 because uh, again remember we have mod of h i squared equals to 1 and these are of eigenvalues. So, this is outside this uh, or this is getting multiplied with all of these eigenvalues. So, this is 1. So, we have uh, this expression now uh, this you could further say is equal to or this is equal to any bar times 1 by 1 plus rho d mean squared by 4 m raised to the power of m and for large rho when S n r is large this is approximately equal to any bar uh, rho d mean squared by 4 m raised to the power of minus m. So, once again you are seeing that uh, it is uh, with diversity the error probability expression is raised to the power of m and the uh, error probability decreases uh, because of these diversity branches. So, uh, we, we, we stop at this point in this particular uh, lecture with this expression and in the next lecture uh, we are going to see that uh, what is the significance of this expression and what we can understand more of diversity uh, from a typical expression of this and uh, what else uh, this expression can help us uh, in future to get expression of uh, error probabilities or understand things in a better way. Thank you.